So how's it everyone? Welcome to another court checklist right here on Open Court. So on today's court checklist, I want to talk about the categories or the different types of tennis rackets out on the market today. And they largely fall into three categories. So those three categories are power rackets, control rackets, and the ones that fall in between power and control called the tweener rackets. So let's start with the first category, which are power rackets, otherwise known as game improvement rackets. So what are the characteristics of these so-called game improvement rackets? Well, they're classified as power rackets because they get a lot of power due to having a large head size, usually over 100 square inches. They also have very thick beams, anywhere between 25 and up in terms of millimeters. Power rackets also have a low overall weight. However, they are weighted more towards the head. They are head heavier. And the reason for that is because if a racket is too light, it's not going to have the plow through to be able to hit the ball and win that collision with the ball. However, if the weight is more centered towards the head, you'll have that momentum that will allow the ball to be sent back with more force and you, for you to be able to hit a lot of power. Game improvement rackets are more towards the beginner side. That's why they're called game improvement. They're meant to help you guys improve your game. And as you get better, you will step up into the more advanced categories, but they're meant to get easy power for those beginners who are still learning the game of tennis. Some examples of power slash game improvement rackets are the Yonex Astro series, the Astro 105 and the 115, very large head. Also the Babla Pure Drive 107 and the 110 and the Head Boom Team L. All of these rackets have very large heads, very low overall, head heavy, balanced, thick beams, uh, open string patterns. They will help you get a lot of easy power to help you guys be able to clear the net and to help improve your game and get easy power. So the second category of tennis rackets are the control rackets, also known as a player's stick. So as you guys can imagine, you have power rackets on one end of the spectrum and the control slash player sticks will be on the other end. So they will be exact opposite in terms of constructions. Power rackets have very large head sizes. Control rackets will have very small ones, usually below 98 square inches. They will also have very thin and flexible beams. A thinner beam will give you a little bit less power, so they're meant to uh, help you guys get more control, but it really puts the onus on the player to be able to generate their own power, and that's why it's meant for advanced players. They will also have a heavier overall weight, meaning that you have to have the strength and technique to be able to swing it, but that weight will give you the plow through to hit the ball through. They will also be weighted more towards the handle. They'll be a little bit head light. And lastly, a lot of control rackets will have a thicker, denser string pattern. Uh, 1820s are very common. And a tighter string pattern will help you get a lower launch angle and keep your big swings inside the baseline. Some examples of control sticks are the Yonex. V-Core Pro 97D 320, very heavy racket, very small head size, very thin beam, meant to give you guys more control, not as much easy power. Also the Babla Pure Strike VS, as well as the Head Prestige Series. All of these have a very high learning curve and are meant for advanced players. So it's the exact opposite of game improvement frames, which are meant for players who are still learning the game of tennis. So we got power rackets on one end, we got control rackets on the other end, and the third category of tennis rackets falls right in between that, and they're aptly called tweener rackets. Tweener rackets have characteristics of both, but they are not so extreme in one end of the spectrum. So tweener rackets will generally be about 98 to 100 square inches, right in between the large heads of the power rackets and the small frames, the small heads of the control rackets. They will also have relatively thick beams to help assist with a little bit of power. Typically 16, 19 is the most common string pattern you will find because that gets enough power but also gets a decent amount of spin and control. The main pro of a tweener racket is that it covers the widest range of tennis players out there. Whether you're an advanced player or an intermediate player looking to take your game to the next level, you can use a tweener racket because they can easily be customized to fit your needs. For example, you can put some tape, uh, lead tape, 
in the frame in the head to make it a little bit more head heavy to give you a little bit more stability and plow through if you want more power or you can put it in the handle to make it a little bit more head light if you're looking for more control you can string it with a thick gauge polyester at a high tension or if you're looking for a little bit more assistance with power you can string it at a low tension with a thinner gauge or a synthetic or multi-filament. Some examples of popular tweener frames out there are the Yonex E-Zone 98 and the V-Core 98 also the Babala Pure Drive and Pure Aero and the Head Speed MP or the Radical MP or basically anything that says MP will fall into that tweener frame. So to sum up, the three types of rackets are the power slash game improvement frames, the control slash player sticks, and the tweener rackets. I hope this information was helpful to you. I hope you guys will understand the differences between the different types of rackets so that when you guys are shopping for your next racket, you'll be able to make an informed purchase. I hope you enjoyed today's court checklist right here on Open Court. If you guys like this content, be sure to overhead smash that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you on an open court.